Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. This video will be about making an 1890s walking skirt. For this I decided to use the Keystone Guide to Jacket and Dress Cutting. I had not used this resource before but figured I could give it a go. The skirt instructions seemed simple enough. Since winter was approaching and had set as a goal to make a new walking skirt for this winter. I was inspired by Bernadette Banner's walking skirt, the link will be above, below, all over. I wanted this skirt to be warm, functional and possibly for day wear. My only other walking skirt isn't very functional, so I wanted one that worked. The wool I bought is a lovely warm brown houndstooth that I bought on sale, as it was back in May. To draft a skirt, I taped together a bunch of newspaper, this is what I use for pattern making. The dimensions and drafting of this pattern required a large space. I had to do this on the floor of my living room, and still, it was only just big enough by a couple of inches. I'll be honest, the drafting of this took me a while. I kept reading and rereading the instructions. As I was short of space, I tried to do it slightly differently, which unsurprisingly did not work. So I ended up having to restart, but finally we got there. I made a mock-up of this out of old sheets and decided I didn't need the last panel, as it would be too voluminous for daily wear for me. I then set about cutting this from the wall. I placed the pattern, traced around it with chalk, added seam allowances and then cut the pieces out. Another reference I used for this is the book The Voice of Fashion by Frances Grimble. This is also the book I used for my previous walking skirt. In particular, I was looking for information on the lining. It reads, Skirts are now so constructed that the outside and lining parts are made up of two separate skirts. The lining is then termed a drop skirt. Another book which verified this is The Authentic Victorian in Dressmaking Techniques, which I had consulted online, but thanks to my secret Santa, now I have in print. It reads, Comparatively few of the skirts at present are lined, or, if a lining is used, it is in the form of a petticoat that is often made entirely separate from the outer skirt. I also love that further on it says that the return of the flatlined skirt is rumoured, but rarely ever seen. With this in mind, I decided not to flatline my skirt and instead try the drop lining, which we will return to further on. I moved on to pinning and basting all the side seams together. This was the perfect time to try, and now to feature, my new love, the Singer 185K. This was gifted to me by a friend and is absolutely lovely. I thought it might be interesting to demonstrate how it winds up the bobbin, so here it is. Thank you. 
I then moved on to sewing down the seams. I also think the machine sounds lovely, so I saved some of it for you. Once all the seams were done, I put it on my dress form to figure out the pleats placement. I decided to go with something similar to my previous skirt, and more akin to turn of the century fan skirts. I then pleated the skirt off the dress form, pinned and basted. I basted up the back seam and then suddenly remembered <gasps> the pocket! If you are new to my channel, it is a tradition that I completely forget about the pocket until all the seams are sewn and often finished. But more on that later. For now, I went about drafting the pocket. I used the same weirdly squarish pocket that Bernadette mentions in her video, as I was very intrigued. I drafted this onto paper and cut it out of the fabric. I also took a moment to cut out my skirt placket here. The sides of the pocket are sewn by machine, and here is my already sewn up side seam. I rip out the seam and slot in the pocket. The edges are turned inwards and it is hand sewn into place. I then pleat the top bit of the pocket and attach the pieces of tape that will connect to the waistband. I then cover the raw edges of the pocket on the inside of the skirt with the same sort of tape.
At this point, I start on the long task of flat felling the seams. I iron them open, then trim one side and iron it again. Then fold over the long edge so it encases the shorter edge and iron again. All seams get this treatment. This is then hand sewed with a whip stitch or a felling stitch. Returning to authentic Victorian dressmaking techniques, I tackled the placket for the back closure of the skirt. I had already cut this out. Plackets are a bit complicated to me and I always forget how to do it, so instead of trying to explain them, I will link an excellent tutorial down below. I do end up finishing them by hand. I then cut out the waistband and sew the short edges. This was then pinned, right sides facing each other, and sewn by machine. I also pinned the pocket tape to the waistband here so it was caught in the machine stitches.
The waistband is then whip stitched into place on the inside. So we are taking a quick um, interlude from sewing and I'm coming on here in my pyjamas just to tell you that sometimes things don't go according to plan. I knew this was too, this was smooth sailing so far and I knew it couldn't, couldn't continue. I've just tried on the skirt after finishing everything. So I flat felded, did the waistband, everything was looking great. Um, it had been a, a lovely to work on it um, until I tried it on and I realised that I put the pocket in the front panel of the skirt. <sighs> I would have mentioned by now that I did the thing that I always do, which is I sewed up the whole skirt, completely forgot about the pocket, and then added it on. So I've already struggled with it. <laughs> it's already been a problem, and now it's becoming another problem. Um, so I've fat furled all of the seams, which means that one of the sides is trimmed back to about a quarter of an inch. <sighs> so what I'm going to do now is try to repair my mistake because that's all we can do in life. Um, I would keep it, but when, when it is on, it's very, very noticeable and it does look really weird to just be at the front. Um, although it's a really nice size pocket, I will say. Um, but yeah, so unfortunately that will mean that I'll have to remove all these bound edges, remove the seam, sew up this seam, finish it, undo the next seam, um, and then try to somehow slot in the pocket. It will also involve undoing the waistband because it's it's got this um, little piece of ribbon which makes it hang from, hang from the waistband. <sighs> it's okay guys, it's okay. So out comes the seam ripper again. I didn't film any of the fixing of the pocket because the procedure was the exact same as the first time except this time in the right seam. I then added a hook to the waistband. I made my own bar with thread by sewing one long stitch several times and then going over that horizontally with a button stitch. Finally, to finish off the hem, I cut wide biased strips of the wool. These are sewn together and ironed. Then I pin them to the hem of the skirt, right sides facing each other. This is sewn by machine and then ironed inwards. The top edge is secured with small whip stitches. For the job lining, I use the same pattern pieces but shorten them, as both books mentioned above talk of a pleated flounce. I 
I sewed up the seams of my machine. I had no extra bobbins for the 185k, so I had to use my more than machine. For these seams, I went straight ahead and did French seams so that I wouldn't have to finish them by hand. I also used a light poly cotton so French seams worked well. I measured the hem of the skirt and figured out with very intimidating maths how long my flounce needed to be. I think this was about 8 meters long. I cut out strips of the poly cotton, sewed them together and then hemmed one edge by using a rolled hem foot on my machine. I then set about pleating it using all the pins I own and my trusty fork. I also basted the pleats as I went along. I gave them a good pressing and then sewed them onto the skirt. I trimmed down that seam allowance and finished it by encasing it in lace tape by machine. I replicated the same pleat arrangement as on the outer skirt. For a waistband, to reduce bulk, I simply used a piece of black ribbon folded in half. As a closure, I threaded some loose set wool cord I had made as a temporary closure. I think I'll make matching cord in the future. And that is that. I was pretty happy with the skirt until I saw this clip at the end. I think it moves quite strangely and I'm not sure why. I think perhaps it might be, need a bit more support, such as a small pad or an extra petticoat. But oh well, I'm still excited to wear it. Thank you very much for watching.